47. John chapter 8, verse 47, it says, He who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. Okay? He who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you once again for being our Father, being our Provider, our Creator, our refuge, especially in times of trouble, in times of difficulties. And we thank you, Lord, for everyone who uh, draws themselves closer to you. You draw yourselves closer to us. And Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness, for your promises that heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall never pass away. You are our strong refuge, O oh God, and we can rely on you on you all the time. And Father, we, we pray that you would bless us as we listen to your word so that uh, our relationship with you would, be, would become stronger and stronger. It would not just be from the outward appearance, but it will be the transformation will be coming from inside out. And we pray, O oh Lord, whatever needs we have, as we trust in you, as we put our faith and confidence in you, Lord, it will be granted to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Okay, and uh, we are going First of all, I would like to greet all the fathers, the happy Father's Day. To all of you, kasama na ako. Happy Father's Day po sa ating lahat. Okay, so... Obviously, ang isi-share ko uh, is about one God and Father of all. I was uh, I was meditating last night what would be the best topic or what would be God's topic for uh, for today. I was thinking of something to honor the, the fathers, but uh, God led me to this topic that we should honor Him, we should we should respect Him, we should. We should not just celebrate as Joy said. We should not just give this day uh, or celebrate celebrate this day to uh, as Father's Day, but we should honor God all the days of our life because He is indeed our Father. Amen. Okay. So uh, as part of introduction, do you know Michael Jordan? Yes. Yes. yes? <laughs> the player. So, aside from that, what makes Michael Jordan so popular? <laughs> huh? One of the best, or is he the best? I think he's the best so far. Yes. Okay. So, did you know that he stopped playing basket basketball for a while? I've said that already. And played baseball. Amen. You know about that. But my question is, do you know why did he play baseball? He wants to prove something else. Uh -huh. He wants to prove something else that he's not good only in basketball. Ah, uh, is that the reason? Uh, oh, baseball is also his favorite. Uh, uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. You should, you should be thinking, or just, just just part of the introduction, despite the fact that he is the best in basketball, he resigned in basketball and played baseball. So there should be a good reason. For a change. For a change? Hmm. That could be one of our reasons from us, but not from him. See it? Yeah, for the sake of the same father. For the sake of the same father. Yes! He did it for the sake of his father because his father wanted him to play baseball, okay? So it was his father's desire, interest, pleasure, or will for him to play baseball. Yes? Unfortunately, unfortunately, whether we try to please our father, what he wanted, what he wanted us to do, but if you don't love what you do, 
Will you do it? No. no. But my point there is, he tried to play baseball because he wanted to please his father. Amen. Amen. And today we would like to uh, would like to share this topic, this tension between. Okay, so our aim for this topic is for us to do the father's will. Do you want to do the father's will? Amen. God the Father is not telling you to play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> for us to have a strong relationship with the Lord and uh, to the Lord our God and Father and for that we will study the distinction between God's children and the devil's children you know what is meant by distinction? difference or kaibahan? okay so what are the distinctions between God's children and the devil's children? <laughs> That is just fairy tale. <laughs> As a priest said in the in the Philippines when they had when we had a seminar, he said, "Magingat kayo sa mga magaganda, misa demonyo yon." Because when you are in the world, you are not using the demonyo yon. You are not using the demonyo yon. What is it? So the, the demon, the, the demon or the devil will not use ugly women. They will use women <laughs> okay so what are the distinctions you attend the church you are God's children you should know the distinction by the way uh, th thank you and welcome to God Most High Christian Ministry thank you for coming sorry maulit muli and also to Christina or Christine Christina Christina thank you you are welcome to God Most High Church <laughs> okay so what are the distinctions again you should know what was the difference. What what difference does he make with with the devil's children? Devil's children don't go to church. Makes sense. Does it make Does it make sense a lot? Spiritually speaking, because you're going to you you attend the church. You are God's you are God's children. It could be a point though. Okay, I'll consider you for that because you're my son. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else? What's the question? <laughs> What's the distinction? What's the distinction between God's children and the devil's one? Uh, God's children listen to God's word. Yes, very good. That's the main point, really. What else? Good and bad. Good and bad, of course. <laughs> Be specific. My goodness! Huh? Okay, so God's children have faith, but it also says in the Bible, even Satan believe in God. And even tremble. God fearing. God fearing? Okay, that's a good point. God fearing. Okay, uh, I'll give you half point for that. <laughs> okay, first John chapter 3, verse 10. Whoever does not practice righteousness, is not of God. I'll show you verse John chapter 3 verse 10. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. So, the distinction between the two are made manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Is it clear? So the first distinction between devil's children and, the, and, the, and God's children, whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. So if you don't practice righteousness, whose father are you? Well, whose children are you? Whose child are you? The devil. I'm not the one saying that. Okay, aside from that, we are not of God if we do not love our brother. It clearly says there, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. <laughs> what if you don't have any brother? Love your sister then. Uh, as a topic, 
I'm, we have only one father, so uh, you are my brother as well. We have uh, because we call God our Father. Yes. So, <laughs> do we love? Do we love our brother unconditionally, without any condition? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> when he says, "Nor is he who does not love his brother," he didn't say who love his brother with for a for a good reason. It means to say we love our fellow brothers or even sisters without condition. No. Okay? So to say, we call ourselves brothers and sisters, but we don't love each other. That's no. But we don't love each other. Sometimes we are just good friends. We just know each other inside the church. But uh, what about outside the church? What about during weekdays? Hindi kayo makainin. <laughs> so what's the point of calling each other brothers and sisters but we don't love each other? <laughs> so again, the second distinction is if we are not if we are not of God, we don't love our brother. We should love our brothers without condition, okay? Aside from that, Christians and non-Christians are almost the same, except for the fact that we go to church and they don't. Did you get the truth about that? Sometimes we behave like a, like the, the, the non-believers, we behave like the devil's children, except for the fact that we go to church and they don't. Why? Because we don't love each other. And I'm so happy, I would like to congratulate each, one, each single one of you because in this church, Hindi also dito ang chismis. Yes. Amen. Amen. We don't backbite each other, we don't gossip each other, we don't ruin each other's reputation. Why? Because we care for each other. Somebody, when somebody needs help, when somebody needs financial support, all of us are willing to contribute to, to give something, to give an amount, whether it's a big amount or a small amount, as long as we care because there's no point calling each other brothers and sisters and we don't care, we don't love them. Amen. Okay, so that was the first, 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 second, uh, first two distinctions. Third distinction between God's children and devil's children. God's children abide in God's house forever. Why? In John chapter 8 verse 35, And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Yes? Do you know the contents of John 8.35? No? Attention please. <laughs> uh, do you know if I say context again? Connecting text or it is the, the summary, it is the wider picture of what we are talking about. So if I say context of John 8.35, what is the context? What is the whole whole picture? What is the wider picture of their conversation? Okay, I'll give you two. John chapter 8 verse 32, what does it say? My goodness. You will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Yes? So, those those Jews whom Jesus was talking, uh, one of their of his uh, spectators, they say, they claim, we are not sons of slavery. We are the sons of Abraham. We are not sons. We are, we are free. We are not the sons of bondage. But Jesus said, 
A slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son, a son abides forever. So, no matter what you're doing, no matter what, how busy you are, because you are a son of God, you are not, you are not, not uh, having rest, or you are restless until you are in the house of the Father. Amen? Okay? So no matter what happened, you desire and Christ to be home in your father's house. As they say, there is no place like home. Amen? Right? Okay. If you cannot answer this question, I'm sure that I will be disappointed. What do you do if you are not well at work? What will you do? Stay at home. <laughs> or if you are not right already, already and you are not well, what will what will you do? You will go home. Why? What what what's in the home that, that makes you that makes the difference? You're comfortable. You have rest. You you feel safe. No pressure. Although you don't need to be admitted to the hospital, to be at home itself is a big factor for your health. Why? There's no place like home. But if you don't decide to be at home, to be in your father's house, I don't think you're really a child of God. <laughs> yes? Am I right? Okay, so for the first week, First, if we don't practice righteousness, uh, we are not a child of God. If we don't love our brother, we are not a child of God. If we don't abide in the house of God, I don't think we are a true child of God. For God's word has a place in our heart. Does God's word the place has a, have, have a place in your heart? John chapter 8, verse 37. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Uh, I'm so blessed uh, with some of our members because they they listen to God's word on Sundays. They attend on on Mondays by Monday by Bible studies, and they still go to Harvestden to listen to God's word in Harvestden Bible study. If the word of God doesn't have a place in their hearts, I don't think they will go there. Amen. 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 So the fact that they, uh, uh, the way I look at it, they become addicted to God's word. It means that the God's word has a special place in their heart. Amen. Amen. And for those people who, who are not eager enough, who are not committed to attend to Sunday services, who are not committed to listen to God's word, I don't think God's word has a special place in their heart. Amen? Amen. So if you are a children, a child of God, if we are children of God, God's word should have a place in our heart. Amen. Yes. Okay? So we give importance and value to His word. We do not ignore His word. We, do, we are not taking for granted His word. Why? Because we give importance and value to His word. That's why Peter said, Where will we go if we, we walk away from you? You have the word that leads us to eternal life. That's why, verse Brother Bob, in John chapter 6, verse 27, as quoted by Brother Bob, labor not for the food that perish, but food for food that leads you to eternal life. Amen. Okay, so aside from that, we treasure His Word. Do you treasure God's Word? Amen. If you treasure something, you keep on coming back on it. Amen. And it is so with God's Word. Okay, Luke chapter 2 verse 51. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. The context of this was the one I had been quoting in Harry's death. When Mary and Jesus thought that Jesus was walking with them. Uh, no, not Mary and Jesus. Mary and Joseph, Jesus' parents, 
thought that Jesus was with them, but after three days' journey, they found out that Jesus wasn't with them. So they went back to Jerusalem, found Jesus in the temple, and Mary told Jesus, Why did you do this to us? Don't you know that we are so worried we're looking for you? But Jesus told Mary, his mother, Don't you know that I should be in my father's business? Are you following me? After saying that, verse 51 tells us that Mary kept all these things in her heart. After you have heard God's word, did you keep it in your heart? Uh, Pastor will post it in Facebook or YouTube anyway. I can review it. <laughs> my own time i don't think so if you could not give your attention to li in listening god's word in church i guarantee you you cannot do it at home no <laughs> okay so see we know the words of the father we are god's children if he, we do his work but if we are doing the devil's work, we are the devil's children. Do you agree with that? Okay, John chapter 8, verse 39. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were of Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Why? Because if you do the work of your father, that means you are his true child. Is it clear? Whose work are you doing? God's work. God's work. Let's see. Let's check about that. Okay, another one. John 8, 41. You do the deeds of your father. So whatever the father is doing, that's, that should be the one we're doing as well. Okay, John chapter 8, verse 44. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. Uh -huh. Before we claim and confess that we are God's children, have we checked or are we aware that whosoever work we are doing, we are their children? Okay, okay, I would like to make it clear. A word reveals whose children are we, and John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Are your works doesn't belong to this category? Are you not destroying? Are you not killing or destroying something? Stealing? No? Okay. Does gossip, is gossiping part of father's work? No. Why? Because gossiping destroys a person's reputation. That's why I said in God's most high Christian ministry, gossiping is not an issue. We don't practice gossiping here. We are not saying them. What does it mean? Okay, I'm glad you have an acronym for that. <laughs> okay, so Jesus came so we can have life and that we have might. We might have it more abundantly. Okay, just check. In everything you do, in every single thing you do, which category does it belong? Does it belong to the works of the devil or does it belong to the works of the Father? Huh? Hello? <laughs> Okay, so I don't care whatever your reasons, why are you doing particular things, but if it is part of killing, stealing, or destroying, it is the devil's work. And if you are doing the devil's work, that means you are a devil's the devil's children. Claro what? Okay. Since we are God's children, if we tell the truth and do not lie, anybody here who is not lying or who hasn't lied before, 
Okay, 
John chapter 14 verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Do you want to be do you want to be a, a, a resident or do you want God to reside in you? Amen. 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 What, what a privilege if God will, will live within us. Amen. No. Would you be happy? Uh, how, what was the occasion yesterday? At what was it? The Queen's birthday? Queen's birthday. Queen's birthday. A husband? A husband? I have no idea. Which one is which? The husband or the queen? The queen. Okay, so. Prince. Oh, Prince. Can you just have a more husband? I don't Prince. I don't used to interpret what Ella was trying to say. 
Are you following me? Yeah. And it is so with God, because we are His children, we understand His word. Yeah. I have a back home, pastor back home, and he, he told me he got three girlfriends and he needed four more because the Bible tells he us love one another. But he didn't tell us love all another one. I don't think he understands God's word. And in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, okay, I would like to read it to you. <laughs> I'm not sure if I have told you this. I have told you this verse. Isaiah chapter 6 or chapter 4, verse 1. Okay. Uh, for, for women or single ladies who are still uh, available or still praying for some. Uh, accept the truth about this. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1. Okay. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own food and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name to take away our reproach. So, pitong babae daw, Lalaki, please pakasalan mo na kami parang awa mo na bawag lang kami mapahiya ganun yun so his interpretation to that verse was he needed seven girlfriends as well hallelujah I don't think he understand God's word do you understand God's word? If not, I don't think you are God's children because God's children understand His word. John chapter 8, verse 43, Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. So, if you are not able to understand God's word, His speech, I don't think you are God's children. In the first place, God sent His Spirit to us so that He will enlighten our understanding. He will comfort us. He will teach us to the truth that He has taught us. Amen? That's why Romans chapter 8, verse 16 and 17 says, It is through the Holy Spirit that we can call Him Father. So if we have the Holy Spirit, there is no reason that we could not understand His Word. Amen. Okay? Nine. Oh, I'm almost finished. God's children are able to listen to God's word. It's different from understanding God's word and listening to his word. And worst is if you are in church and you are not able to listen to God's word. My goodness. You're wasting your time, dude. <laughs> okay, so we understand His Word. We listen to His Word. We always find time to listen to His Word. We always make ourselves available to listen to His Word. And the third one, if we are God's children, we hear God's Word. What's the difference? You understand, you listen, and you hear. Okay, let's say for example. If, if a news caster or if you have, there's a news, what will I ask you is, have you heard about the news? Yes, am I right? Yes. Have you heard? So when, when I say God's children hear God's word, not all, all people hear God's word. Hello? Okay. Uh, sa Tagalog, medyo na iba ng konti. Ang sabi sa Tagalog in John chapter 8 verse 47 says, Ang nakikinig sa salita ng Diyos ay nanggagaling sa Diyos. Kung i-interpret natin it from Tagalog version, kung nakinig ka, galing ka sa Diyos. It would, it would make sense. But if I say, God's children hear God's word, I could explain it the way Sister Rika uh, uh, said it before. She said, those who are coming from Singapore always claim that they hear God's word. God is talking to them. But she's fortunate, she's blessed because God also talks to her. Does God talk to you? Hello? Does God talk to you? 
If God doesn't talk to you, that means you are not able to hear God's word. And if you are not able to hear God's word, whose child are you? Dark side. <laughs> Last night I was I was teasing Ella after after our Bible study in Harps then uh, I slept with Ella. I just I just uh, had a short time with, with my computer. I didn't even bother to make a sermon for today. And then Ella was, uh, was telling me that could you switch off your computer? I could not sleep. <laughs> and I tried to ignore her. And she told me, Dad, do you understand the word stop? <laughs> He who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. Okay, just an illustration. I don't think uh, this would uh, uh, make the day a shame, but uh, I always tell them all because they are having fun of having headsets at home. I told them, uh, I will call them that. That. Did you? <laughs> no response at all. Why? Because they have headsets. They're always having headsets within them. So no matter how I shout, how loud I, how I shout, they would not hear me because they have headsets. And it is so, if we don't hear God's word, He said, therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. Do you hear God when He is calling and talking to you? Yes. Or you have a headset of your own? <laughs> and do you know that the, in, in deepness, there are seven types of deepness. One type of deepness is uh, uh, it's in the brain. Your ears are perfectly okay, but the nerves transmitting the sound from your ears to your brain is defective. And there is also a kind of deepness that is psychological. When I say psychological, your brain is a bit okay, your ears is okay, are okay, but still you cannot hear. Why? Because it is psychological. There is also a kind of deepness that your ears are not okay, especially if it is full of wax. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need cotton buds. I think you need spoon. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I just remember a story uh, when this patient went to a doctor to have a, a check up or consultation. Uh, she told the doctor, Doctor, what's my problem? Oh, what's wrong? Uh, I, I, my, I always have stomach ache, but if I drink coke. But if it's free, it's okay with me. <laughs> I guess that the doctor told her that uh, this is your problem. Uh, you've got a <laughs> uh, you've got a thick face, a kapalangka, but it is on sigmora. You're not ashamed of anything, but your your stomach is so sensitive. <laughs> Why did you that why did we go there? <laughs> so our God is neither dead nor a stone nor a piece of wood wood. Because of that, he can talk. When he talk, can you hear? <laughs> because if we are God's children, we hear his word. Again, he who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. The so sensitive. Just open the door and I'm awake already. Just switch on the light and I'm awake already. 
I'm so sensitive. And one of the uh, most sensitive person in the Bible is Samuel. Do you know why? He was uh, sleeping and then when God called Samuel, he hear God's word. And in the first place, he thought it was Eli calling him. After he hears his name being called, he went to Eli, are you calling me, sir? And then Eli realized that God was talking and calling to Eli. So Eli told Samuel, next time you hear your name being called, tell him, speak, Lord, I am listening. The good thing with Samuel, he was sleeping and he hear God's word. Nowadays, people are awake and when they hear God's word, they went to sleep. <laughs> Are we honoring him? 
First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31, one of my favorite verses, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, honor him. They say it in Kapampangan, honor him. <laughs> okay, last. God's children has a relationship with him. If you don't have a relationship with God, I doubt you have. You are a child of God. Why? Luke chapter 11 verse 1. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also told his disciples. So he said to them, in, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and then it cares on to say, Give us this day our daily bread. But I would like to point out the word, Our Father. It means to say, If if you pray to God as your father, you should have a relationship with him. Does everybody have relationship with God? Amen. What is meant by relationship again? Monday Bible study? Sharing, Sharing of two love? Two love. Two love. Two love? Sharing of two persons. Sharing of two persons? No. Sharing of life of two persons. The sharing of life between two people. So relationship is sharing of life between two people. God shared His only begotten Son. God shared His love. God shared His time. God shared His blessings. What have you shared to God? You shared your blessing? Are you sharing your time to God? Uh, on Sundays, what about weekdays? Uh, Facebook most of the time. <laughs> is that a relationship? Is that what you call relationship? So, it is most important for us to consider before we call him our father, we should have a relationship with him. I just remembered the story. Uh, a son was taking a test and then the father told his son, Son, remember this one. If you fail the test, forget that I'm your father. So the son took the test. The day after next, the, son, uh, the father asked the son, How's the test? The son said, Who are you? <laughs> We should consider our relationship with God. Yes. Amen? Yes. If, okay, let's say for example, uh, let's say, let's say uh, at least, at least uh, I know some. By the time Sam knows how to speak clearly, and he, he, and, and he, will, uh, he will tell me, Father, could you give me 100 pounds? So we go, look up. So this is the solution to see no I would, I would tell that like what? Like that. But even if my own children, if they ask something from me and they don't have a good relationship, do you think I will give them what they want? What they need? Yes, maybe for their needs, but what they want? Do you think I, I will give them? No way. Relationship is important. How could you call father if you don't have a relationship with him? God will say, who are you? <laughs> okay? Luke chapter 11 verse 3, give us this day our daily bread. You can ask your father, God the Father, your daily bread, your sustenance, all your needs. Because of if you have a relationship with Him. So please, are you distinguished child of God? Pagalogin ko pa ba yung tayo kayo? I think you understand English. Are you distinguished child of God? Yes. Kilalang kilala ka ba bilang isang anak ng Diyos? Do you have a strong relationship with God? Wala lang ni Mina. Relationship siguro, but not strong. I said, do you have a strong relationship with God? Amen. Amen. Okay. Will people know you are a child of God because of who you are? 
Okay? Conclusion again. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 up to 6. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. So whether you are of God Most High Christian Ministry, whether you are of the Catholic Church, you are of the Pentecostal Church, you are of Born Again Church, you are of Church, uh, Church of England, there is only one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. And this Father belongs to God the Father. And we should celebrate Father's Day not just once a year, but every day of our lives. Amen. I invite you to stand up before we call our Father to this church. I would like to dedicate this song to our Lord as our Father. I invite you to put yourselves in the presence of God as we sing this song. And if you know this song, declare it unto the Lord that everything you need is, is Him. There's nothing else you are desiring for. There's nothing else that would fulfill the satisfactions of your heart. But it is God Himself. As we sing this song all for love. <laughs> 